investment in the space industry has taken one giant leap this decade. For a look at the future of the business of space and more, let's welcome Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is astrophysicist with the American Museum of Natural History. His new book is called Letters from an Astrophysicist. And Neil, thanks for being here. It's great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me back. We're going to talk about the book in just a moment, but mm -hmm. let's talk about investment in space because that's what our viewers have been watching and kind of paying very close attention to. What, what do you think about all of the commercialized uh, private and public companies that are now working their way into fill the, the jobs that NASA used to take. Yeah, it should have happened decades ago, really. And uh, most people don't know, you know, when we think of space, we think of NASA, it may be SpaceX. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the value of uh, not only hardware, but business enabled or protected by space assets, it is vastly greater worldwide than anything we've ever put in NASA. Not ever, but in modern times. And so NASA is a small fraction of what is going on in space right now, worldwide. And, and I mean, think about uh, the GPS, which was, of course, a military project. Right. Entire industries exist only because of that. So that's the future. I mean, it, it's kind of amazing to me, but I, I will admit, it gives me a little bit of pause when you think about all these private companies going into space. It was hard enough to control when it was a few countries that were sending things up there. Yeah. How do we control what's happening in space when, uh, you know, well, that's it's anybody's what, game? It's why there's regulations. I mean, how do you control airplanes and make sure they don't fall out of the sky? You know, Are there we, enough regulations for space right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it, you know, it's a, a little bit of a Wild West. And, you know, what happens if you put up a satellite and I put up one and then my satellite irritates your satellite right. with my magnetic field? I just field. think about all the space junk that's up there. Oh, an don't, astronaut don't. who came in one time and said that's what he worried about most when he was in space, that I, space junk would puncture. I think that's why aliens actually haven't visited us, because they've seen our <laughs> space junk orbit here. <laughs> so, Neil, there's two elements of that. One of regulation. One is so much junk around. Yes. But the other one is that in addition to enabling good things, you enable bad actors. Yes. So at what point does regulation react to the enabling of bad actors? It's hard, and I think that's kind of the point of a space force. Well, you normally, when we think of a branch of the military, you think, oh, there's an invading army coming right. across your borders. But uh, a military force also ought to be protecting your assets. And the larger our assets in space, again, not only the value of the hardware itself, but the commerce it enables, then the more you would need such a thing. And so the Space Force has actually been on the table for quite some time. Although, you big, are you a big proponent of it? I, I, I don't tell people what to do, but I just alert them of the values or the, 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 the pluses and minuses of it. Uh, there's always been a Space Command within the Air Force, and it's right. been there for decades. I mean, we've had uh, spy satellites and things, and this, so that's not a are new... Are you surprised that there hasn't been any military action in space? Meaning, if you think of the politics of space... Well, it depends what you mean by military action. If right. I have a satellite and then you are a bad actor and you put up another satellite that, you know, whose magnetic field disrupts my operations, that's, no, it's not warriors fighting each other, right. but it's you interfering with my commerce. But what about allowing bad actors to have incredible mapping of places? I mean, just, just allowing this notion of asymmetric conflict and suddenly the weak force is much stronger because... That's, that's been the history of war. I mean, that's not new... It's not a new thing. So you don't think this... If this someone is... invents a bow and arrow and you don't have one, that's asymmetric advantage. Then you have a bow and arrow, now no, we move we're on. we're not preventing uh, another country necessarily from putting up particular satellites, are we? No, unless we, in our judgment, that satellite is, has the purpose of disrupting our operations. And mm -hmm. so part of what it is to have free access to space is free access, free... free uh, undisturbed commerce uh, and, and the like. So, yeah, all of these, all this matters. And that's what I mean, it's kind of a Wild West. Yeah, it's, it, I think it will shake itself out, but it will require sort of international agreement and cooperation. All right, I want to shift gears to something that I saw that you tweeted about recently, where you got into it a little bit with Elon Musk. You just raised the point that, uh, as a, from a physics perspective, there were some questions about what happened with his Cybertruck towing the oh. F Ford 150. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 oh, I, go ahead. I, I, so, so I think a zillion people saw that video. Yeah. And uh, as a video, it was quite impressive. It pulled the F-150 backwards while its wheels were spinning. But the, 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 the bay of the F-150 was completely empty. Right. And if, if, you're trying to, if your drivetrain has no weight over it, then a child could pull it uphill. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little. But so had that... It, by the way, you've seen a, 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 a suburban people who have F-150s who want to shovel your snow. Mm -hmm. 
They load the, the, the back of the truck with piles of snow so that you can have traction. So it was not a fair contest. And and you, I told, pointed, I, you pointed that out, and, and Elon Musk responded. Yes, he did. Oh, you got it up there, yeah. 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 I have a rear What's your relationship with I have, a, I have a rear engine car, so I'll, I don't need front wheel drive because I can have snow tires on the back. Right, because the weight of the engine exactly. now is over the drivetrain. It's the same phenomenon. Yes, that's, that's really what it is. So I it, could have d done your tweet, and I don't need a, a, a stinking PhD. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I needed a PhD either, but a lot of people were surprised by it. Yeah. Neil, I want to talk about your book. It's sure. called Letters from an Astrophysicist. Mm -hmm. You have lots and lots of people who write to you, ask you questions about space, about physics, about all kinds of things, and you actually write back to a lot of them. Yeah, keeping the car analogy, this has been going on under the hood with me and the public for decades. Yeah. And it involves topics that generally I don't, I'm not public on. People ask me about God. Mm -hmm. They ask me about uh, career choices. They ask me about uh, me meaning in life, whether it's some low point. And so for me, it's like of a contract. I don't just give them a wiki answer, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I want to stand where they are and have some sensitivity to where they're coming from. I think most people have never even met a scientist, much less claim one as their you friend. Do you have time uh, to explain the duality of light? Of light? You mean uh, a wave particle duality? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, How can it be both? Yeah, so because our brains are not wired to think of the duality of anything. It's why advertising okay. works. It's, it's, ma it's a massless particle, though? Yes. Yes. So, and but, it be, it but if you accelerate it, it goes to infinite mass. No, no. It if only you get near the speed, speed of, light? of light? It only exists at nothing okay. or as the speed of light. Okay. And what I'm saying is, it's, it's why advertising works when you say, is it, is it uh, uh, less filling or is it, what? You under, it you, is it a candy or is it a gum? Do you understand general relativity, honestly? Yeah, if you, if you attack it geometrically, you can understand it. Oh, that's it. good. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are hard things. By the way, you don't actually have to understand it. You just have to know that it works and then embrace that and move on. You, you Otherwise, you, you could be... Time dilation and length contract and length contract, but, but those are both so hard to they're, understand. They're freaky, and you go into the quantum world, that's even that's freaky. I mean. People yeah. ask these questions in the book, and yeah, it's freaky. You read a brief history of time and understand anything after the first paragraph? <laughs> <laughs> I thought some of that, I can say this now because he's gone, but I thought some of that could have been explained a little, a little you more think? accessibly. <laughs> you think? Um, yeah, I mean... All right, we have, we have to go, so <laughs> okay. I guess we're not going to get to the bottom of these things. Uh, uh, anyway. Not in the next 30 Stay seconds. Stay curious, though. That's you the only way to discover Are you an unfold. atheist? Totally? Uh, I'm a, I, count, I count myself as an agnostic okay. because I do think I don't that think atheists say, I thought you were an atheist. I well, don't think it's mutually exclusive. I think we're, we're, we're not in a position to just say unequivocally that there's no higher power. I just yeah, I, and I never have. Yeah, I, I good. Say, don't. Don't now. If the high power that you have requires that the universe is 6,000 years old, I will say well, that is an objectively I mean, false I know it. I understand carbon dating. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I got it.